DIYs by Dar, Bright and Bold Challenge, hosted by Crystal from the Crafty Creech and co-hosted by Stitch from Creep Designs. The chair I did get from Goodwill for $5 and the table I got for $5 from the store that I purchased my paint from. This chair, pretty stained up, not really thinking that it's too old, um, but it was a very solid chair. No markings on the bottom. Maybe it's 20 years old, I would say. Uh, if anybody knows, let me know. The table, pretty beat up as well. I believe that it is a veneer table. Solid little table, but then again, a lot of stains all over the top. I went ahead and washed them up outside and went with the Dixie Bell Boss gray paint and gave both pieces two coats over the entire pieces. Once they were dry, um, I did find some holes that were going through the bottom on the table and one up on the chair. I had to put a little bit of filler in there before I started with my first layer. These are my colors. Rustic Red, Colonel Mustard, Mermaid Tail, Flamingo, all Dixie Bell brand paint in the chalk mineral line. I'm going to start with the Rustic Red and I do have some sea spray additive which makes your paint thick and chunky. And I do not have the scooper as usual so I kind of eyeballed it and I probably put about three good healthy scoops in there. Then a nice big brush I am going to stipple both pieces over the entire sets. I did go on the bottoms as well, but rather lightly so they weren't real um, textured. Go ahead and take a scraper. I use my carbide scraper because it works the best for me. And I'm just going to take off that first heavy layer and all those peaks and valleys in um, bits of paint and get those all off. If you get down to the wood, you get down to the primer, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Now I'm ready for the second step. I'm going to sprinkle uh, some more of the salt spray additive over the top of the piece. And both pieces are going to be done like this, except for on their bottoms. Then I'm going to spray it with water. Just get it nice and wet. Not so it's sopping and it's going to roll off, but just so it takes form and it stays where you put it. My next coat is going to be the kernel mustard, put it in another container because you do not want to contaminate your paint. And I'm going to go over the entire piece, both pieces, with the kernel mustard. Now, after that's dry, it's time to scrape. Make sure you got something underneath you to catch all them flicks so you can get rid of them. And I'm just trying to get down to that red color. Any of the open wood. Okay, all ready. You could probably leave them, even leave them like this and they look pretty good. But I need a little more bright and bold. I ran out of sea spray additive, so I had to make my own. What I took was equal amounts of flour, salt, and baking soda. I sprit spritzed my pieces first because this was pretty light and powdery and I did want it to stick.
make sure you spritz that as well and I did go back and paint the underneath of that chair so it was all red now flamingo the straight paint no additive mixed in put it in another container and I'm just putting that color where I feel like it where I think I want it to possibly show through from the last layer of paint that I'm going to go ahead and put on I waited for that to dry and got the mermaid tail and that's my last color I'm adding and I'm going to stipple that on where I want that color to be where mainly the color of the chair will end up being that turquoise color. Well, wait for them to dry. They kind of look tutti fruity to me. Here you can see all the little grains of salt sitting on the top. And I opted to use my surf prep because scraping it with the big scraper was not working real well. Um, since it was so fine, what I had put down on top of it, I needed to be a little bit more careful and have a little more control over what I was taking off of there. But you can see I'm getting down to that yellow layer. I'm getting down to that red layer and I'm still letting a bit of that pink and that mermaid's tail show through and trying to get a nice smoothness also on the chair and get it ready for some stenciling. I looked at transfers, but they didn't fit. So I pulled out all the stencils I have that I thought would go with this type of pattern. And I eventually decided on one that I thought would look good. And I took the same paint, the rusty nail, which uh, was that base layer, and centered that stencil up. Here's my tool I used and I went ahead and I just started tapping away with that little sponge make sure you let it dry before you continue with your design and I um, did line it up with the bottom of that chair to, type, to try to keep that design uh, in a line.
completed. Maybe a little bit dark. I probably am going to hit it with some sandpaper. For the little table, I did measure that out because I did want it to be centered. So once I found that point, I just started with the center one and worked my way outward. There is the design, and I did want to sand it a bit. Especially, I hit the ones on the end a little bit more so I could see some of the color from underneath come through those end ones especially. But sanding it sure helped a lot, brought it down a lot. Polycrylic. These pieces got two coats overall. And the top of the table and the top where you sit on the chair were given three. Now my favorite part, I want to put some twine on. And I have three different choices. And I was hoping I would like the bigger rope. But... Unfortunately, I liked the smaller rope, so I knew it was going to take me twice the time to do this. Take your um, twine and put a little glue on the end and twist it. So then it will stay and it will not unravel. Then you want to start on the bottom of a rung or on the back of a rung and get your hot glue in place. Be careful and don't be burning your fingers. Get it in place and start that rope going around. Um, there is really no easy way to do this. I found that if I wrap that off that big bale onto my hand, like with my hand open, I had to wrap it around my palm inside going around about 40 times and it would give me enough rope to go all the way from one side to the other. I think just keeping it in a coil and keeping the tension on it as you're taking it around to move your big pile of rope is the easiest way to go because if you let off the tension, it's just going to unravel on you. So try to keep that tension on it as you're going. And when you get to the end, just end it like you did the beginning. Put it in the back, bottom, Twirl that end and then stick some more glue in there and pack it down in there nice and tight. Remember what we started with? Oh, here's what we got now. Bright and bold.
thanks Crystal from the Crafty Creech and also Stitch from Creep Designs for hosting this challenge. And check out the playlist. It will be in my description. A lot of talented artists. Like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.